Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 here to talk about SEC teams in the NCAA tournament or hopefully in the NCAA tournament. Blake, we're getting to the time of year where we're talking bracketology at the end of January. We're doing this a day before the Big 12 SEC challenge and kind of an interesting mix of teams in the SEC here in the mix for potential postseason play. Let's start at the top where Alabama is clearly the team with the best resume in the SEC. Now, Tennessee fans may be saying, hold on, our team's pretty good too. They are. Uh, but the difference between resume and tournament resume are different things at times. And Alabama clearly the number one team in terms of tournament pedigree with wins at Houston, over Arkansas, over Michigan State on the neutral floor, Memphis at home, Kentucky at home, and Missouri on the road. The, the Crimson Tide – we think the best team in the league, and I think in the eyes of the selection committee, if the field were picked today, we think they'd feel the same, Blake. Yeah, I think pretty clear cut at this point. They're a number one seed, and um, yeah, at this point, when you're a number one seed, you're just playing your way out of it. You, you know, there's nowhere to really go except to the top seed. But um, even as a number one seed, yeah, they're they're sitting in a nice spot. And again, I mean, the two losses are to UConn and Gonzaga, and of course, UConn's hit a bit of a slide here lately, but at the time, you know, UConn was playing well up until not long ago. Um, you know, the Zags are still the Zags. They're, they're 17 and four. Yes, they lost the WCC game, but a lot of good stuff on Alabama's resume to this point. And, you know, the win at Houston is the one that obviously still carries the most weight, just given where Houston's at. So yeah, number one seed with nowhere to go, but, but down unless they go up to the top seed, which it's not out of the realm of possibility, depending on how they finish the season. Big games left at Auburn, at Tennessee. Um, you know, th those are big ones, of course, home against Auburn. Right now, those are the three marquee games in terms of, you know, giving your resume a boost. But um, still, you know, so, so some quality wins to be had out there for, for the tie. Yeah, number two on our list and probably number two in the brackets today is Tennessee. Uh, this is one of the great mysteries of the net, Blake. Uh, Tennessee is two in the net. Alabama is three. Alabama is three or six and two against quad one. Tennessee three and one. Alabama five and zero oh against quad two. Tennessee four and two. Both teams four and zero oh against quad three. And the Vols are six and zero oh in quad four, while Alabama is three and zero. Oh. Somehow that gets the Vols a higher seat in the net right now. Uh, can't explain that one. But uh, Tennessee has got three quad one wins. I think those are Kansas, Maryland, and Southern Cal all on neutral floors. Now, Tennessee is not beaten, and this is a quirk of the schedule. As we speak, a team in the SEC that's probably going to the NCAA tournament, the back half of the SEC schedule will get a little tougher, but uh, a little bit of an oddity there with the net. But I think the Vols – are a two seed for now. And I think that's where you're seeing Tennessee in most brackets. Yep. Nice one over Kansas. We said Kansas is sort of sliding a little bit, but um, I think that win will still mean something, of course, by the time we get to March. And yeah, I mean, now is when the schedule starts to pick up a bit uh, from, from an SEC standpoint. And of course, getting the game on Saturday against Texas, that's a quality win opportunity. Florida looking more and more like a quality win opportunity now. Um, you know, Auburn, they've got Missouri, Alabama, Kentucky, and AM on the road, Arkansas, Auburn. They, they again, the back half of their schedule is not easy. And so, uh, as we always say, the good news is you win those games, they give you a bump, you lose some of those games, they don't really hurt you all that much. So, um, you know, again, depending on who the opponent is, but so yeah, Tennessee sitting in a good spot. Uh, you know, the, the bigger thing is we talked about, they've gotten everyone back in the lineup and. Um, have produced a, a pretty nice resume to this point, you know, losses to Kentucky, Arizona, the Colorado one's still there, but that's, that's such a long time ago now. Um, you know, that's game two of the season and certainly it'll still carry some weight just in terms of the overall number. But, uh, still, I, I think you're, you're seeing a team that two seed for now, but again, let's say they navigate the back half of the schedule in a, in a very impressive way. I'm not saying they win every game, but you know, let's say maybe they lose two. Uh, this stretch, which again, it's going to be a hard ask, I think, because they got some tough yeah. games uh, the rest of the way. But let's just let's play the what if. if. If that's kind of the scenario, they lose two, maybe three. And let's say, you know, that's to an Alabama or, you know, teams like that. They're still right there on that line, I think, in terms of feeling pretty good about a, 
a top two, three seed at worst, uh, just given that the strength of schedule the rest of the way really picks up. Yeah, there's a big drop off from here. I think the next team in the tournament right now would be Auburn. But this is going to be a common theme that you hear. The SEC, frankly, kind of wet the bed in the pre-conference portion. Now, now not everybody did. Alabama and Tennessee got some big wins, but either teams didn't play much of of out-of-conference prowess or lost a lot of those games. Auburn probably – Bracket Matrix has Auburn. This is a Friday. No, the, the bracket has not been updated since the 25th. We sit here on the 27th, and Auburn has taken on a loss to Texas A&M since. Auburn was a five seed in the latest Bracket Matrix. I would have to think it drops a seed line or two. Auburn is, let's see, in quad one. Well, let's just go through the quads. One, two, three, and four. Two and two, six and two, four and oh, four and oh. The, the two wins Auburn has of note – are Arkansas and Northwestern, and neither of those. They're nice wins. Uh, Arkansas, I think, would be in the tournament right now, although the Hogs has some issues. We'll get to them next. Northwestern might be, might not be. Um, yeah, th- this is going to be a recurring theme. The, some of these teams that are in the mix are going to have to start picking up some quality wins, and, and a lot of opportunities were missed um, out of the league. Yeah, I mean, I think for Auburn, it, I don't know if that necessarily applies because they weren't really in a – I mean, I guess the Memphis and USC games are the ones that you would look at. But yeah, they didn't have a ton of opportunities at that high, high level. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, look, they've got the loss at Georgia on there. It's not ideal. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's where, again, we talk about schedule starting to pick up. Like Auburn's schedule starts to pick up a bit from here because – you know, you go to West Virginia, that's another team, you know, trying to play their way into the tournament. I mean, they're 12 and 8 right now. Again, you have to kind of make up some ground. So they're in kind of a a spot where they really need to win. And then Auburn goes to Tennessee. They go to AM. Uh, they got Alabama at home, Missouri at home. Still got games, you know, on the road against Kentucky, Alabama. They got Tennessee at home. Like they've they've got a lot of opportunity the rest of the way. But again, that's where that that can be a good thing and a bad thing too, because Trying to win a lot of those games is going to be tough, but if you can win some of those, then you really start to boost your resume. And I, I've said it, and I know you know people can kind of maybe roll their eyes a little bit, but I, I keep saying I think there's only two teams that are just 100 percent safe right now in the SEC. Yeah, and I think it's Alabama right. and Tennessee, and it's not a knock on Auburn, and I, I think they'll make the tournament. But let's also be honest and say that this this back part of the schedule is not easy, and you know it's they wouldn't be surprised if they lose some games here and there, but. I do think they'll pick up enough wins to, you know, to, to be just fine. But it is at least worth noting that because, like you said, there is a bit of a drop off, and I think expecting any any other teams in the SEC outside of Alabama, and Tennessee, just to have a stellar record in conference play, I don't see that happening. And so I think when you look at it from that standpoint, yeah, I mean, this is a lot of opportunities still available for Auburn. They can make up some ground here. Yeah, the next team in our discussion is Arkansas, which is actually four spots ahead of Auburn in the net. Arkansas at 26 on Friday morning. Auburn was 30. Across the quads, here are Arkansas's records. Quad one, one and four, two, two and two, and then seven and oh, and four and oh, and quads three and four. Big problem for Arkansas, 0 and four on the road, although it is three and one in neutral court opportunities. The Hogs have beaten San Diego State which is a tournament team, Oklahoma, which is probably on the outside looking in as we do this, and Missouri, which we'll get to the Tigers in a minute. I think Missouri would be in if the field were picked today. But Arkansas is is probably going to need to beat somebody on the road at some point. You don't want a goose egg there. Uh, We'll have some quality win opportunities coming up, and you would also wonder if Nick Smith Jr. is able to come back how the committee will look at the Razorbacks because, of course, he has missed most of the season to date. Well, here's what's interesting about winning a game on the road is think about this group of road games they have left. They're at Baylor on Saturday. They're at South Carolina. So that's, you know, that's a win, but it does absolutely nothing for you. Might Uh, even hurt you. At Kentucky, at Texas A&M, at Alabama, at Tennessee. That's their remaining road games. Um they're going to be an underdog in every one of those games. Again, not to say they can't win them, but like that's just Baylor, Kentucky, A&M, Alabama, Tennessee. That's a brutal road slate. Um, So, 
you know, yes, the South Carolina one will do something, but if you're looking at it, it's not going to do anything from a resume standpoint. So, yeah, I mean, that that becomes an interesting spot for Arkansas. Like we said, Arkansas is three and five in the league right now. So they've still got ground to make up to, to get that conference record where it needs to be. Um, and it's not going to be easy to get there because I think, you know, look at the projected Ken Palm's got them at nine and nine in the conference. Um, like I said, I think they're going to get to five and five. I think they can beat A&M. I think they can beat South Carolina on the road. Get back to five and five, five and five. You kind of start from even home games against Mississippi State, Florida, Georgia. They'll be favored in all three of those. Um, you know, so then it's just a matter of, I think, getting to nine and nine, 10 and eight. You feel really good at that point. I think if you're Arkansas, but again, it's all a matter of what happens with everybody else too. So yeah, Hogs, um, you know, they're, they're playing from behind here in terms of the way they started SEC play, but I think they're on the right track. They've just got to, they've got to make the most of some of these opportunities on the road, especially because um, the home games, some of them are maybe not going to do a ton for them, but that also is dependent on a Mississippi state making a run, a Florida making a run, teams like that, Kentucky staying on their current course. If so, there's really not many bad loss opportunities left for Arkansas. And again, that's a good thing because they really need to pick up some some wins just to kind of get that conference record where it needs to be. Bracket matrix through the 25th had Missouri as a 10 seed. Since then, Missouri, um, I guess that would include the win over Ole Miss on the road. Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Anyway, that doesn't really do much. Doesn't do much, yeah. Yeah, okay, numbers for Missouri – Missouri is 53 in the net, but the resume is a little better than that. Two and three on the road, two and oh neutral, two and five quad one, three and oh quad two, two and oh quad three, and then eight and oh quad four. What is dragging Missouri down is an out of conference schedule that wasn't great, except for the two or three really good teams it played. And and that's what Missouri's saving grace is at the moment. Uh, home win over Illinois, home win over Kentucky went over UCF on a neutral floor where it hit a miracle three-pointer to end the game. So Missouri is solidly in the field right now. Bracket Matrix, though, has the Tigers around a 10, which is probably within a seed of, of being accurate. Missouri's one of the best things is not just the wins. They've avoided the bad loss to this point. And yeah, that's always important this time of year. And yes, there's non-conference schedule. We've talked about it many times. It was not great up until kind of that Kansas game. But – They've avoided the bad loss now, and that's what you have to continue to do. I think that's significant. Now, they're going to need to pick up some wins, like you said, to feel confident that they're getting in. You know, they've already beaten you know, UCF, Illinois, Kentucky, Arkansas. Those are all, you know, that's a, a solid group to have. But, you know, in Iowa State, this is a big opportunity on Saturday, big, you know, SEC Big 12 Challenge. Um, you know, they've still got road games at Tennessee, at Auburn. But beyond that, <laughs> When you really look at it, that again is where Missouri has to take care of business because there are some bad loss opportunities still available on the schedule. LSU at home, South Carolina at home, um, you know, Georgia on the road, LSU yeah. on the road, Miss, Ole Miss at home. Those are all opportunities that can send you in the wrong direction and, and really can almost knock you out, uh, depending on again where they are at that point. So they need to win the games they should win, keep avoiding the bad losses. That will keep their their sheet kind of clean there when it comes to, you know, the, the loss category, which they've done that to this point outside of just losing games to good teams. So if they can continue that trend, um, you know, and, and obviously have a, a, a winning record in conference play, they're four and four right now. I think they'll be fine, but that is at least worth noting when you look at Missouri is they really need to, to beat the teams they should be. They can't afford those bad losses uh, unless they're able to counter those with some some big wins, like an Iowa State, um, you know, who knows, winning out of Tennessee or an Auburn, teams like that. But the rest of the group, as of right now, the rest of the, the wins not doing a whole lot for them outside of those ones we just mentioned. Kentucky snuck into bracket matrix on Wednesday as an 11. Not all the brackets have the Wildcats in the tournament. Uh, the problem for the Cats, they've got exactly as many quad one wins as they have quad four losses. That's one. Of course, that win was a huge one. That was in Knoxville, but really not much else of consequence for Kentucky. Now, look, the Wildcats are going to have multiple opportunities coming up. Kansas and Lexington on Saturday, uh, two games remaining against Florida, which is an interesting team. We'll get to the Gators in a minute. 
home game with Arkansas, home game with Tennessee, home game with Auburn, and also a, a road game with Arkansas. So t- Kentucky will have ample opportunity to put the big wins on the resume. But as of, of now, Kentucky just slips in the field uh, due to not having done much of noting its good teams. Yep, through Kentucky, you're rooting for Florida to keep heading in the right direction. You're rooting for Arkansas to get to to continue their streak um, because you've still got four games between those two teams. And so I think that's what you're looking for if you're Kentucky. You, you really want to, you know, you, you want to cheer those those teams on. Maybe not easy to do, but you need those teams to get into that conversation and stay in that conversation too because, um, again, other teams, uh, Vanderbilt and Ole Miss, Georgia, teams like that, again, are, are probably not doing anything but hurting your your resume. Um, so, yeah, that, that's that's what I think is the big factor for, for Kentucky. Obviously, beating Kansas would be huge, but you, you need to be a fan of the bubble teams because I think that – you know, maybe Arkansas is not in that category. Maybe they wind up being just fine. But I think those are the two teams, as I look at their remaining schedule, still two ta- two games left against those. And, of course, Kentucky gets Tennessee at home, too. Let's not forget that. That's a huge opportunity. Um, so, hey, home wins against Kansas and Tennessee, perhaps, the rest of the way. They got Auburn at home, too. Um, as we said, Arkansas, Florida, both at home. If those teams had in the right direction, Kentucky's resume can get way more impressive very quickly, just depending on kind of what happens around them. So, Okay, stop me when you've heard this before. Texas A&M has got some work to do to overcome what it didn't do out of conference, which was, you know, lose to Murray State on a neutral floor, lose to Wofford at home, uh, whiffed in good win opportunities over Colorado, Boise State, Memphis, did, did absolutely nothing in the out-of-conference portion. And here comes conference play, and Buzz Williams' team has gotten hot. They are coming off a win at Auburn, which Bracket Matrix didn't even have the Aggies getting a vote as of Wednesday. I would have to think once that updates, that'll change. A&M might even sneak into the field. A&M's got a home win over Missouri and two wins over Florida, which is a top 50 net team. This is just going to be a bizarre resume. And if you're A&M, you don't want to go into Selection Sunday like you did last year where – and I let me be clear. I think the Aggies got absolutely robbed. I think not only should they have been in, they should have been about a nine. But here's what's going against A&M right now. Across the quads, records two and three, two and one, two and one, eight and one. Um, now, A&M is four and two on the road. That's going to help. And one and three on neutral floors. And, and frankly – a M's got plenty of opportunity in front of it to, to get in probably safely. Uh, but you, you want to beat Arkansas, Auburn again, actually Arkansas twice, get another crack at Missouri, uh, get a shot at Tennessee in College Station. Mississippi State would be a good win on the road. And then, of course, Alabama at home to end the season. So the Aggies certainly have a chance to stamp their ticket without the drama that didn't go their way a year ago. Yep. Tennessee, Alabama, Arkansas all at home. Those are what stands out to me on the rest of their schedule. Um, Hey, you win two of those, you're feeling really good about yourself. Um, So I I think that's that's kind of what you you look at with them. And, again, for me, it's the way they're playing right now, and and I think that's the bigger story here is that I fully expect them to win a lot of games the rest of the way because of just how they're playing. And if they do that, the numbers take care of themselves. And so uh, I think that's kind of where Texas A&M's at. And you know, six and one in conference right now, I think they can get as high as 12 wins. I mean, really, when you look at their schedule, it's again, it sets up. I'm not saying it's easy, but like road, a lot of their road games yeah. are winnable. They get the, some of their toughest, they get their two toughest games at home, Tennessee and Alabama. Schedule sets up nicely for the Aggies. And so I, I, I fully expect them to make the tournament right now. Like again, and we've got a long way to go, but if you're asking me right now, if, you know, if I have to place a bet all in, I, I say they make it. I would I, go. I, just, I yeah. look at the schedule, and um, I think that if they just continue on the path they're on, there's no reason to believe that they're not going to win the majority of the games they play the rest of the way, and that would include wins over some quality competition uh, and, and teams that probably will be in the tournament. So, yeah, I think that the Aggies are heading on the right path. Florida is sort of Texas A&M light. The Gators 50 in the net, records across across quads, one and six, two and two, five and zero, oh, four and zero. Oh. What Florida did was 
not get any wins of consequence out of the conference, but it played a tough schedule. I mean, it, it's losses, Florida Atlantic, Xavier, West Virginia, Connecticut, Oklahoma. I mean, that's a tough schedule right there. Uh, has beaten Missouri so far and has got some opportunities ahead. A win at Kansas State, which yeah, I think will be a lot games. to write off. I mean, look at the next yeah, four ten- games, right? Tennessee at home, Kentucky and Alabama. Away. That, that's the problem. You'd like to see maybe one of those at home somewhere. Yeah. But, um, but it doesn't hurt you necessarily. Um, no. But then that know, number, the loss number starts to go up, and that's where you start to wonder. So, Well, if, if you're Florida, here's your – your blueprint. Remember the year that Bryce Drew's Vandy team got in with, I don't know, 15 or 16 losses or whatever. Yeah. And, and what that was, was a tough out of conference schedule where they lost a lot of games and they won just enough in a regular season, got hot late and then strung together a couple of wins in the sec tournament. If you're Florida, that's your path because the computers, and it's not just the net, all the predictive computers have Florida inside the top 50. The committee will look at that. Some, the Gators have a chance, but they're going to have to start winning games they've not won so far. Like, here's your scenario, right? Florida goes, let's say they win five more games the rest of the way, go 17 and 14. That's what Ken Palm hasn't projected as. But let's say all five of those wins come against Vanderbilt, Ole Miss, Vanderbilt, Georgia, and LSU. They lose, the re- they lose the rest of their games. Like, there's just not enough quality wins in there, right? So, um, th- they've got to beat somebody of – you know, that, that projects to uh, – that Kentucky game at home looks huge right now because it's like, you know, it's February 22nd. I, that's a huge game. Because it's hard to pick them to win at Kansas State, to win at Kentucky, to win at Alabama, win at Arkansas, those kind of games. Like, I think you're going to – they're going to be the underdog there. But they almost have to have some of those games go their way. But, again, they've avoided the just bad, bad loss to this point. And that, that speaks for something. And so if they can continue to do that, they beat the teams they should beat, they don't add any bad losses – grab a win or two somewhere against these these good teams, yeah, they, they should be fine. But I'm almost the opposite on Florida as I was on AM. If I had to go all in on right now and say if I think they get in or not, I would say no on Florida just because they've got a brutal schedule. And quite honestly, they could go 0-4 in their next four games. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're, what, 12-12, and 12, you know? And so it's – um, I think they get one in there somewhere. I just – I don't know why. I just – I sense that's going to happen. But that would be huge because, again, the rest of the way they just – they need some wins and they need to obviously can't be, I don't, you know, it's like, okay, if they're sitting there, at what would it be? 15, 16 and 15, you know, I just don't think they're, yeah. Like even into that spot, that's an extreme, I think, but I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not sure yet on the Gators. So. Yeah. Another team that's sort of in that category too, is Mississippi state. And you're going, how does a team that's one in seven in the league merit discussion? Well, here's, here's how. Um, losses in the league so far, Tennessee mm-hmm. twice, Alabama twice, Auburn on the road, uh, Florida at home, yeah, just a brutal schedule so far for state. And what state did out of conference was it beat Marquette, which is a, I think about a four seed right now. And it beat Utah, which is a bubble team. Both those were neutral floor wins, not a lot else to speak of there, but the Bulldogs are going to be favored to win a lot of games coming up as the schedule eases up, but they've also got some win opportunities in there. Missouri at home, TCU at home, Kentucky at home, uh, Missouri also on the road, Texas A&M at home. So State is capable of winning some of these games. Alabama nearly found that out on Wednesday night, and, and so – if state can avoid some bad losses and maybe pick off three or four of those good teams, hmm. uh, this is the team that you could see in discussion if it can just get at 500 or so in the league, which, again, there, there are going to be some opportunities. But this is going to be an interesting team to watch, Blake, if the Bulldogs are able to pick off some teams down the stretch. My issue is they're 1-7 and seven in the league, and I think they have to get to 9-9. Nine and nine. I think they may have yeah. to get to 10-8. and eight. <laughs> And so if you if you project that they have to get to 10 and 8, then they have to go 9 and 1 the rest of the way. And I think the confidence in them doing that is not very high at the moment. Um yeah. they do have some close losses, we said, some close losses, but I just think that's a lot to ask for a team that struggled as much as they have offensively. Now again, you're talking to the guy who had to find an upset somewhere in the SEC Big 12 Challenge and picked him to beat TCU, which may wind up being not a good idea, but 
if they do, that's a big step. But their SEC record is the bigger issue for me right now. And I just, they're not getting in at eight and 10. Nine and nine is going to be questionable um because it's going to depend on who you know who those wins come against it's just it's still it's still a tall ask even if you say nine and nine because they're one and seven right now and yes they'll be favored in, in a lot of these games but i don't know man i they're another one it i feel like it's like after february 8th is when that discussion gets more interesting because they will play tcu yeah. south carolina missouri lsu three out of four home games there should win at south carolina then you're like, all right, here's the setup for the final three weeks. And so, yeah, right now, though, I, I just feel like it's a it's a long way to get there, to get to that number they need in conference wins. It's improbable. I think I think you could make a good case for them at 9-9 nine and nine because they will have played Alabama twice, Tennessee twice, Missouri twice. No, they'll also played South Carolina twice, which gives them a chance for, they for also two beat good Marquette, wins. Which helps. That, yeah, Marquette's yeah. like a four-ish today. So, and, and again, Utah could slip their way in, and neither of those were in Starkville. Those were both neutral site wins. I think that's one, like, if they're 9-9, nine and nine, that's going to be the team that, and and maybe even 8-10, and 10, if that includes the right wins. Say they get a couple in the SEC tournament in Nashville, that's going to be a team that I think you're going to see talked about a lot going into Selection Sunday if they can do some damage in the conference tournament under that scenario, which is still an uphill climb but it is not impossible the way they defend. Yeah. Coming back from one and seven feels like a, a long way yeah. to go versus an Arkansas, as we said, that, you know, also put themselves in a spot, but Arkansas has felt like they were more manageable to get out of that. Mississippi State just feels like it's going to be, but again, their, their next three SEC games, they, they should win all three of them. If you look at it from just the, the setup, right? So yeah, you never know. They they maybe get back to four and seven, but even at four and seven, it's like boy, that still feels like a long way to get to a winning record. So yeah, we'll see. Any parting thoughts? Of course, the SEC Big Twelve Challenge on Saturday will be a good opportunity for a lot of these teams to pick up wins, uh, maybe put themselves on the right side of the bubble, yep. maybe move up a seed line. Yep, we got all that on the uh, channel. Hit subscribe. We got all of our, um, yeah, our predictions are up. We'll have another video up on that and uh, check everything out there. Football, baseball, it's all on the way. All right. Thanks for watching us here at Southeastern 14. He's Blake Lovell. I'm Chris Lee. We'll see you again soon with plenty of SEC Hoops coverage.